that we just relax into this beautiful day as we bring ourselves into alignment with that divine presence within and all around us and into alignment with each other as CSL as we speak our mission statement together. We recognize and realize the omnipresence of divine love as the truth of all. Within my 
sacredness of this moment. I recognize the fullness <coughs> of spirit. And as we each breathe in this breath of life, we feel that spirit moving in and through and as us. For the spirit is the fullness of creation, the allness of creation. It is unconditional love, power, and presence, the infinite good. Omnipresent, omnificent, omnipotent, and always available. The spirit is the flow of life, the source of all creation, and everything is a divine expression of this life which is always whole, perfect, and complete. And I am one with the Spirit. And as I align myself with that which I am, I am gloriously blessed and fully immersed in that energetic flow of life, right now, always, forever. And this is the truth for each of us as we each align with the essence of our being. We create our unique expression from this attributes of spirit. And we rejoice in the freedom that is our divine right of being. So I declare that this truth sets us free as we express gratitude for all the divine blessings in our life. We release anything holding us back from demonstrating our magnificence and our freedom. I accept for each of us a greater awareness of our divine nature, a higher consciousness of our essence, and the freedom to live fully in wisdom, beauty, joy, power, harmony, and peace. We fully express the unending creativity of life in our work, our relationships, and our purpose in life. And we are freely, freely free to express the infinite possibilities of life as our life now. And for those requesting prayer, spirit is active in each request. I accept that wholeness and perfection being revealed as each is guided and directed to a perfect outcome. The peace of spirit comforts and uplifts each one through this healing process. This service is blessed by the divine love shining forth from each one here, and we are uplifted and renewed by all that transpires through the music, the message, and the fellowship. And I give thanks for this truth of life as our true identity, and I am grateful that this life is ours to express fully. And I release this word into the law, knowing it is already so as we join together confidently and joyfully and declare, and so it is. Deeper than I've ever been before. 
to who we are. If there is something that is obstructing who you are, please put your worries and your <coughs> distress in the prayer chest and the practitioner will be doing affirmative prayer treatment on your behalf this week. Rejoicing in the good fortune of others is a practice that can help us when we feel emotionally shut down and unable to connect with others. Rejoicing generates goodwill. Come on, children. And for me, rejoicing is synonymous with feeling gratitude for. And from MJ Ryan, we can touch wonder in every moment as we slow down and perceive the world around us as if for the first time. <coughs> and when we contact wonder, we know thankfulness for the most ordinary, extraordinary things of life. Oh 
Thank you, Tamara Hawes. So here we are, Abundant Gratitude. I have a video message today from Dr. Edward Villiam. Yes, our dear Edward, and his, we have titled this The Gift of, of Gratitude. So enjoy that. And welcome everyone. I'm so glad to see you and um, enjoy this post Thanksgiving <coughs> haze of gratitude with you. It's so nice to see you. Um, and I notice that we're doing it again. We're starting to sit in the same place. <laughs> I love that. I love to see you there. The Thomases over there, the hands over there. And I see some new people, and I see some new people moving closer and closer to the front. I love it. I love that you are there. Yes, there's Coach over there, and Don's always in that seat. And there's you lived in Almeida right in that seat. Isn't that wonderful to come to a place and feel that comfort where we can be held together? and learn together to be our best selves. When I look back at these past two years, see how the room went quiet? <laughs> when I look back at these past two years, I have the, a sense of awe and amazement, really, for everything that's taken place in my personal life, in the life of our community, so many changes in our county, in our nation, in our world. Really, awe and amazement, and yet not all of it has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Not all of it has been easy. Not all of it has been convenient. And if I had known what these experiences would be like, if somebody gave me a warning, <coughs> before I stepped into each experience. I wonder if I would have agreed to go. Would I have got on the bus to go if I had a choice? I might not have wanted to step into them. And as I was going through some of the experiences of this past year, I would say I didn't exactly experience gratitude or appreciation or amazement while I was going through some of that. Do you know what I mean? I can see how I, what I experienced a lot of the time was struggle, resistance, <laughs> confusion. And yet if I can just step back from it a little bit, I can see that every point along the way, there was always something or someone, some element of goodness that was beautiful and helpful and inspiring even without ever wanting something from me in return. Whether that was simply the air that I was breathing or the chair I was sitting on or some encouraging word, or an act of kindness by a, a stranger that I observed. Every point along the way. So there's where my gratitude is. You know, I used to think of gratitude as that feeling I have when I get, when I receive something that I want or that I need. And, and it is good and appropriate to have that feeling when we get and receive what we need. <laughs> I'm remembering when I was in college, you know, I came from a very, very poor family, and I was studying music in school, and um, we, we couldn't afford the instrument that I needed. You know, <laughs> 40 years ago, I said more than that. A thousand dollars for an instrument was astronomically high. We just couldn't wrap our heads around that. And, and I was at risk for not being able 
to complete the program or at least keep up with the other students who all had what they need. Now, um, a local business sponsored me, found me and sponsored me and paid for that instrument um, so that I could participate. And I was blown away by that. So I went to the business owner to ask what I could do in return. And I remember the look on his face. He just looked at me and said nothing, as if it was the silliest question he had ever heard. <laughs> Nevertheless, I, I, I was grateful for the sport, and I said so. More importantly, that act of generosity opened something in me, a general feeling of amazement and appreciation, because I couldn't have predicted that outcome. I could, it wasn't part of my planning. And there was absolutely nothing being asked of me in return. I wanted to remember that feeling. And, and I have, mostly. <laughs> I want to remember it because it helps me to pay attention to the thousands of ways that life supports me without asking for a single thing in return. And I want to remember it because it's also helped me to be generous without asking for anything in return. I want to trust that that feeling and that way of being is always available to me. I want to live as if I really know that there is a powerful good in this universe flowing through me just as it flows through you, and that I can use it, like you can, to live my best self and contribute to this world. And I want to know that not only in the good times, but also in years like the past two. All along the way. Now when I can remember and pause for a moment and breathe and, and look for the good and appreciate it and acknowledge all the small miracles that are present along the way, when I can do that, the act of doing it helps me to keep on going, even when I can't see the other side clearly yet. And you know, when I'm doing this exercise of noticing and appreciating the good, it's not like I'm ignoring or denying the real difficulties and needs that I have, that the world has, that people around me have. I'm, I'm not denying that. I'm doing something else. I, I, I'm getting into the habit of being a little more aware of the simplest things that make this amazing journey called life what It is the mystery that it is. And paying attention that way, all the time it turns into a consciousness of gratitude, of appreciation. Even when I don't yet know what the gift is, when it will come, or how it will arrive. <laughs> and sometimes I... I can't get into appreciation right away. It seems too far away. So I, I do something, I, maybe it's a trick. What I do is I just start looking at life. I suspend my bias, I stop looking for what's wrong. I try to look at life with an open mind gratefully seeing it as it is. The Mindfulness Code is a book written by Donald Altman, and in it he gives an exercise that I love doing, and maybe you'd like to try it. 
He says, first, turn your attention to what you have in your life from the very moment you wake in the morning. Appreciate the breath. The blankets that warm you. The shower that refreshes and cleanses you. And even the alarm clock that wakes you up. Next, find a reminder of such ordinary goodness that you can carry around with you throughout the day. For example, a picture of a loved one or a stone or some other object from a memorable trip or an inspirational quote. And then finally, share your appreciation of this goodness with others. I love that. Knowing that I was going to share this quote with you this morning, when I was in the kitchen at the center here getting a cup of coffee, I spent a moment looking at the cup. No agenda, looking at it. You know, when I can get into that feeling of appreciation, my heart softens and my mind slows down and I get that feeling of awe. The feeling that goes along with the phrase, oh my God. For me, that feeling, it's both love and respect together that I feel, and humility together when I see life around me in its fragile, delicate, complicated, powerful, amazing, mysterious state. And that's when I notice the air that I breathe doesn't want anything from me. That blanket in the morning doesn't want a thing from me. It makes no demand. That cup is perfectly being a cup. Everything is what it is, perfectly. And then I might even be able to see myself in the same way as I look at that cup, or that blanket, or that wall, with acceptance, with respect with kindness. So for example, if I'm worried or stressed out about something, I try to see that. It is what it is. I try to see it with kind-hearted compassion, without making any demand on it, without rejecting that part of me. Then from this attitude of acceptance, a gentle Gratitude just rises up. And, and you know, to get into it, to keep that feeling going, there are some things that are helpful for me. It's, it's helpful for me to admit that I don't always know how things will work out. It's helpful for me to accept that on this journey, there, there may be tension struggle, disagreement, disappointment, loss, change, surprises. It's useful for me to realize that I get impatient to get to the good stuff. And when I can admit this, when I can admit I don't know everything, and then I'm impatient, then I can relax a bit. And when I relax a bit, then I can hold things less tightly. And when I hold things less tightly, amazing things happen that I really can't predict, that I really can't plan. 
It, it's almost as if life is just waiting for me to take that breath and to open my appreciative heart and to let reality in. Sometimes it feels like a window opening in a stuffy room, letting in fresh air, and I can breathe more easily, and I can see more clearly, and I can move more flowingly. And in that state, when I drop the urge to fight against life, I start to notice more and more and more of what there is in life that I may have been taking for granted. One of our spiritual practices at the Center for Spiritual Living is called circulation. And it includes simple gratitude exercises that can help lead us to this kind of well, kind-hearted state of mind. Gratitude ex exercises help me, they help me recover from life's stress when I remember to do them. <laughs> the gratitude exercises help turn my emptiness into gladness. For example, when I silently thank everyone and everything, this is a practice that I do, and I don't make a big deal about it, and I don't tell people I'm doing it, it just goes on in me, especially when my mind is troubled. I start the practice of appreciating things silently, whatever I can, so if I see someone helping a child, I just say, my mind, thank you. If I see someone smiling at somebody they love, I don't, may not even know them, I just say thank you. And when I keep on going with this practice, something changes in me. The door, the window, it opens. It's not like life suddenly be, makes more sense, although it may. It, it's not like the reason for poverty and war suddenly become more clear to me, it might. But a slow warmth, an inner light begins to glow in me, and I call it gratitude, that's what it feels like. And it gives me the courage to look for more, to be grateful for. And it gives me the courage to risk being generous without strings attached. And when I say generous, I mean in every way. With my assumptions about other people, with my praise, with my self-care, with what I have. So I keep on finding ways to practice getting into this feeling, and one of the ways is by reflecting on the year and asking myself, and I invite you to do that too, ask yourself in this past year, how has life shown itself to you in its tender beauty? You know, maybe through an event that moved you? Or an unexpected kindness? Or this past year, how have you, how have I shown up well as my best self, as best as possible? Was there some act of kindness, some act of generosity and caring? In this past year, how have I been touched, moved? by another person's act of kindness or generosity. In this past year, how have my eyes been opened 
to the mystical oneness of the spiritual life that we share in common. And then I remind myself, stay in that feeling of awe and gratitude as long as possible. Why? Because I think this world is hungry for your gift of gratitude because of what it brings. To me, your gift of gratitude is an acknowledgement that this life is worth living. Your gift of gratitude feeds people around your community. It feeds them with hope and it makes the impossible possible. Every time you express your gratitude, think of it this way, you are giving strength and courage for people to go on. One of the simplest and I think most beautiful ways of practicing feeling gratitude that I know of is by saying what I am grateful for. For example, I don't mind telling you I am grateful for my life. <laughs> I am grateful for my friends who know the truth about me and still love me anyway. <laughs> huh? As you know, there are things to know about each one of us, right? <laughs> I'm grateful for the, the great women in my life who, who have shown me how to be strong and gentle. I'm grateful for the, the great men in my life who have shown me how to be gentle and strong. I leave you with this. Gratitude is contagious. The warmth of it is irresistible to others. Gratitude is creative. It can do things that we by ourselves cannot do. Gratitude is attractive, and what I mean by that is it draws us forward into being the best selves we can be in life. I invite you to take a breath in with me and to exhale for a moment of prayer. There is one source from which we all come, the living Spirit Almighty. One of its most ancient names is love. And as we heard Reverend Christ describe it, the self-givingness of the universe through itself, to itself as us. So today in this prayer, I identify myself with that givingness and I know <laughs> that it is always available for me to sync my mind, my heart, and my actions with that beautiful expression of giving. And I know this is true and available for everyone who hears these words. And so for a moment in time, I drop all planning, all computing, all figuring out, all reaching, all strategy, and for a moment, I rest in the awesome awareness that around me and in me, before me and behind me are millions of examples of the self-givingness. And so I tune my thought today through this prayer to notice in you the beauty And in so doing, I know that I am lifted up to take my place in the community of beings with courage and with an 
inclination to share and love and uplift creation. I know that as soon as these words are spoken and accepted in my heart and our hearts, that spiritual law takes it away <laughs> and causes it to be. I know then that as it is spoken, it is done. So I consider myself and ourselves to be rooted in gratitude today, now. And that is why I say, and so it is. Thank you. 
blessings are gratefully received as they go forth, blessing our church, our community, and our world. And so it is. Welcome anyone who is here for the first time. Welcome to CSL. We have some refreshments and coffee downstairs. We do have a talking stick going to happen. You're welcome to stay for that. Tamara will be in the lobby somewhere. She can answer any questions that you might have about our center. She also uh, has a little device if you would like to use your debit or credit card for anything that we take money here for, she can do that as well. Thank you, Tamara, for your multi-talentedness. Uh, I also want to remind you, the bookstore is open. I do see Sally here, so she will go down. You can go visit with Sally in the bookstore. That would be great. Uh, sign up for Thanksgiving dinner if you would like to come. The prayer chest is in the lobby down the stairs to the left. Please utilize the prayer chest if you have a challenge in your life or maybe a great adventure you're going off onto. Um, for some extra prayer around that, our licensed practitioner is Lou Kunzelman, and she will take those prayer requests and in her own spiritual time, she will do spiritual mind treatment, which is our form of prayer, on your behalf in her own time. So uh, please fill that out. All of those are kept confident, confidential. Um, and we are so grateful to Lou for that invisible work. <laughs> December 2nd, that's a Friday, December 2nd. Wheel of Fortune is our theme. Um, so this is our biggest fundraiser that we do. We have tickets on sale right now. If, if you don't feel like you can do a ticket, I do have people who have purchased tickets that would like to sponsor people to go. So please see me if that is the case for you. Otherwise, our tickets are on sale for $50 a piece. Uh, that will include a dinner buffet. It will include one mocktail drink. That means it's non-alcoholic. And uh, five tokens that you can use on the big wheel when you spin the big wheel because there is a... Winner every time! time. <laughs> so we have that going on. Uh, we also have a silent auction that will be going on at the same time. And we have a real live DJ, a real DJ, Chuck J, AKA Charles Walker from Wave 11 will be here to DJ for us. We have been learning, uh, we've been learning line dances. So he will be playing some line dance music and we'll all be getting out there doing line dances and other music that will be going on. Other wheels will have the wheel, uh, the pie and cake wheel for a chance to win homemade cakes and pies. A lot of things that are, are we think are fun ways to be able to raise money together as a community for our center. So we really appreciate you jumping in on the fun. We're having fun doing this. Um, what else do I need to say about all of that? Bring a friend. Good idea. Whoever said that. Uh, so tickets are on sale. I'll help you with that. Um, dance. There is one dance lesson left, and we'll go over all of those. But it won't be today. We have talking stick today. We have um, potluck Sunday next week. So the next one we'll do a dance lesson, and then like the next Friday is the soul feast. Wow. So that's coming up fast. Um, any questions, just see somebody on core council. Uh, yeah, raise your hand if you're on core council and we'll answer. So see somebody on core council if you have a question or me afterwards. Uh, anything else about that? Okay, thank you in advance for uh, supporting the center and however you support the center. Sitting in your seat right now, smiling at each other, being grateful for life. That is a great way to support the center and the world. So thank you so much. Um, okay, I think I'm finished talking about all of that. And we have claiming our good up here. 
So these are things that we're grateful for. Here we are saying them out loud as a group together. All the way down, here we go. I am grateful for the life I'm living. I am grateful to be a part of this amazing universe. I am grateful for the blessings in my life, both big and small. I am grateful for the beauty of the nature that's all around me, and so it is. I am in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place.